Hello there. This is Angelo John Lewis for the Sacred Inclusion Network. If you'd like to know more about us, the simplest, simplest way is to just go to our website, sacredinclusion.com. Today, it's my privilege to interview Jamie Suss, who will be facilitating an event for us that we're calling Supercharging Affirmations on September 23rd, I believe, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about um, Jamie. He's um, He's got a lot of experience doing a lot of things. He's um, taught um, English in Latin America for um, uh, many years, right? Many years. And um, in the process of that, he learned about a lot about the importance of language for helping people get what they want and achieve the results that they want. Um, so after becoming a... Um, after, after being an English teacher, he, um, he enrolled in a master's degree um, um, program in applied linguistics. But midstream, he decided that he didn't want to be an academic, and he wanted to focus on a more intuitive path. And so he's been doing things like teaching yoga for the past 10 years in both Spanish and English. And now he lives in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, and he spends a lot of his time in community engagement activities. He's been an integral organizer and presenter at the Wellness Fest Ecuador in 2023, where he also presented. And uh, Jamie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Angelo. I appreciate you having me on here. Jamie, um, you're going to be talking a lot. Of, you're going to be leading us through an exploration about, um, ex about affirmations in general. And I thought um, it might be useful for people to get a flavor of um, your own experience with, this, with these things. Now, I know you have um, you, you place, place great importance on language, proper language, and how to utilize it, and you apply it when you help people choose the proper affirmations for them. I wonder if you could tell us a personal story that shows me how you learned about this subject. Yeah, um, good question. So I found myself in a, a vision board workshop. You know, a vision board is a declaring what we want to manifest and create in our lives, and I had put something on my vision board that was something that I didn't want anymore. Uh, I didn't want to feel a certain way anymore. And when we were all sharing our things, the, the facilitator of the workshop had brought this to my attention. Like, why would I put something that I don't want on the thing that I'm looking to manifest? And something that I pulled from this workshop that has stuck with me to this day is how our language affects our behavior. And so the, the way that we use our words, which is both thoughts and spoken word, the way our, our language works, creates a type of image or a mind movie, right? And then from that mind movie, we create some type of behavior, whether that be energy or emotion, some type of behavior is created from that. And there creates a story. And so I was creating a story of what I was looking to create and you know, what I was looking to bring into my life. And the reality that came from that was less focused, right? You know, quite often we say hope for the best while planning for the worst. And then we get surprised when both happen at the same time. So what stuck with me from that workshop, and, and I still practice with my clients, is how the way we use our words, like going across the screen, the way I use my words becomes some type of image or mind movie. And that mind movie becomes some type of behavior, whether it be the energy or the emotion. And I realized that I was manifesting negativity because I was focused on negativity. And I was focused on negativity because uh, I used to have this common response. You know, someone would say, how are you doing today? And my response would have been, I can't complain. You know, quite easy yet topical response that we we say all the time. What I didn't realize that I was doing in my imagery was I was making an image of me complaining, regularly complaining, even though like right now I didn't have a complaint. No, I can't complain. What that means is that the other times I was complaining. And then I realized that by constantly complaining or criticizing, it kept my brain in the negative and I was manifesting negative things. Um, experiences that I didn't want to have or are difficult to do, or I found resistance. I, I was stopping myself or sabotaging in different ways. And so from that workshop, I decided to do some different trainings. And where this led me to was that the way we use our words, the way I use mine, the way you use hers, we are helping each other enlist what we create. 
right? So if I said, I don't want to have these problems anymore, I started to imagine myself with those problems, the ones that I was looking to avoid. And if I mentioned them with you, then at some point in the day, you're going to imagine me with those problems that I was looking to avoid. So now there's two people making those images and the behavior reflected that. So uh, at some point in the day, you know, if I am talking with this like a group of 30 people, then I have 31 images of the thing I'm looking to avoid. And then we start to treat each other in this way as if I have these problems, whatever the problems were. And so I realized that I needed to get serious about my language. I was already serious in a way of teaching language and learning in teaching culture and the ways that we work through language. And, you know, language is a tool to solve problems. And so what if we could use this in a different way to solve our own inner problems to create more internal connection and with internal connection it makes more easier ways of creating community in the external. You know, um, I know that you have a background in linguistics, which I find fascinating. And I'm wondering, and I know it's past history a little bit for you, but, it, but you studied it seriously. Um, how, how does that, how does that impact your understanding of this now? Uh, much deeper, right? So from the grammar, we look at the grammar, which is the way that we fo form our, our sentences, our, our paragraphs, our thought process. The grammar reflects a certain type of logic, right? And that logic is what creates the mind movie, right? And so if I was a, and then from there, we have rhetoric, which is the, you know, the form, function, use, and application of the language. So if I made a small adjustment in the grammar, the way something was said, it changed the image in my mind just enough to change the behavior. So for example, let's play a game, a one word game. And quite often I'm gonna ask you to say this and ask the audience to say this as well. What happens if I fall into bad habits? Now think about this for a moment. What comes to mind? What happens if I fall into bad habits? Keep repeating them. Exactly. And so I'm imagining, you know, more of the, the, the worst case scenario, but I'm not expecting it, right? What happens if I fall into bad habits? Okay. If we take out one word and then change for another one, what happens when I fall into bad habits? Bad one things. word, one change of grammar completely changes the image, right? So if I fall into bad habits, it's like, if it's going to rain but it's different than when it's raining. Interesting. And so in that way, I realized that uh, I can be more masterful. I can be more in charge of my own language in order to help others help me to manifest different things. And also that we're doing this all the time, right? So with that simple statement of, I can't complain, being adjusted is like, oh, I'm regularly complaining. I'm regularly being negative. And the brain already has a, a negative bias, right? If I give you 10 statements, nine of them are complaints and one of them is a compliment and it's the best compliment you've received in a long time. Those nine complaints will wash away the one compliment because the brain has a negativity bias for evolutionary reasons in order to protect us. We anticipate the negative so we don't have to deal with it again. Now, what we're looking to do is to rewire and reprogram. So on one level, we're going to take that negative and replace it with three positives so that we can work with the negativity bias of the brain and also move forward regarding being better manifestors. Let's talk a little bit about affirmations. Um, you know, um, I'm one of a number of people that I've experimented with affirmations um, periodically. And sometimes I just sort of drop, drop it because I don't find it working for me. Now, you've been at this for a while, and I'm sure that you have some idea as to um, why people's affirmation practice might not work. Um, what are some of the maybe um, mistakes that people use when they're trying to um, work with affirmations? Uh, like I just mentioned, the first mistake is that when we, we say something we don't want, right? I don't want to feel that again. I don't want to experience that again. We say something we don't want, which then laser focuses the mind on that exact thing that I'm looking to avoid. So that's one thing of, of that. The other part is consistency, right? So repetition being the mother of all skills. And it's a, how the brain is wired, basically. And so with the law of repetition, stating that for our, each time we repeat a certain stimulus, a certain response is created. So if I start to repeat something, 
and I repeat it again and again and again, it becomes more likely that I can believe it, right? So a thought and a belief, a belief is simply a thought that I have repeated so many times that it's now true for me and true in my experience. So when it comes to affirmations, part of it is consistency. The other part of it is um, how do we anchor it into our body, give it a feeling tone. So we get out of the mind and into the body. And most often we're just in the mind with the affirmation and people can use them over and over again to the point where they rely on it. Yet, yet there's a juxtaposition in the way of there's an external conflict with the internal world and the affirmation is in the way versus clearing the way. And what I mean by that is, um, let's see if we can find an example. So had a client who was looking to stop smoking and they kept telling themselves that they can't do it. They can't do it. They can't do it anymore. That it's taken a toll on their body. They've been doing it for 20 years or however long and they just can't do it. So they're focusing on all the things that they couldn't do anymore, that they couldn't enjoy rather than what they could enjoy. So they're looking to have a positive result, which is better health. Yet in the process of getting there is like, I can't do this. And so their mind was laser focused on the thing they couldn't do. And then they were more likely to break the habit or, or break break the, the dry spell that they had and, and keep it going because their mind was focused in a certain way. So in this case, the way that we use our words became the mind movie. I can't do this keeps the movie of me imagining myself doing this. And if I mention it to others, then they're also going to imagine me doing this. So the more I repeated it, the more likely I was to get that same response. So if we're able to make a short, a small adjustment within the language, I'm able to create a different response. And now it takes more to retrain the brain. There's a lot of things we have to unlearn, right? And so I have to be able to examine things, question, challenge, analyze, and come to my own conclusions in order to unlearn, to, to recreate these neural networks. Now, um, affirmations are nothing new, as you know, and uh, I wonder if you could maybe um, tell us uh, maybe some examples throughout history as to how people have used them to get the results they want. Yeah, exactly. Um, so an affirmation in the affirmative, something in the positive, has been used in order for people to direct their mind and keep maintain focus and concentration. So if we look at where affirmations come from, from other cultures, from Sanskrit, we take the word mantra. Most people have a certain mantra. And man translates as mind, tra means tool. So a mantra, something that is repeated, is a way of focusing the mind. Now, in the yogis and the Buddhas uh, traditions, what they would do is they would use the mantra in order to focus their mind so they can keep one single point of focus and to build the skill of concentration because it, it's not something that comes naturally. It's something we cultivate. And if we bring this into the modern times, how that tool has become, it's easy to see in advertising. Because a motto, a jingle, a slogan is a way of focusing the mind on whatever the product or service is. So it's so strange that we can talk about, you know, do you remember certain slogans or jingles from when we were younger? And we still have that in our mind because that was a way that the mind was focused and then repeated again and again and again. And so we remember it. Yeah, I think advertising is like a, it's a wonderful example. It's like we're, we're using this all the time, but uh Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily direct us into where we where we need to go or where we want to go. It's more like um, you know, where other people want us to go. So we have yeah. this event coming up on the on the twenty third, uh, eleven o'clock. I'll, I'll post the information in the show notes for people. But I wonder, um, you know, we're calling it um, supercharging affirmations. What do you expect people? What would you like people to to gather it after they spend their hour and a half with us? Or with you? Yeah, I, I would love to share the space with you all. And and at the end of the ninety minute workshop which you're going to walk away with your own supercharged affirmations. And what that entails is we're going to draft them, which means we're going to do our first draft and our second draft so we can get the language right. And then we're going to craft them so that we can, you can you're going to place this somewhere that's visible, whether that be on the bathroom mirror, someplace that you, could, you are going to notice it. So it's going to be more repeatable, right? And the whole point of this is making our own system, which is a practical, repeatable thing that you can do and, and replicate. And then from there, we're going to supercharge it, which means we're going to anchor it into the body. 
And the tool that I use for that is breathing. So the powerful combination of words, breath, and the body is how we're going to be able to supercharge this. And so at the end of the 90 minute workshop, you're going to walk away with your own handcrafted affirmations. That's fantastic. I, um, I can't wait, you know, I can't wait for mine, you know, and, uh, I have just exactly the, the, the thing that I want to focus on, but anyway, Jamie, um, I'm, I'm so happy that you're, you're going to be doing this and I'm glad to spend a little time with you, um, today. And, um, I'm going to edit this and put this out and we'll see where it goes. Awesome. Thank you, Angela.